Welcome back everybody to the Great Property Meet YouTube channel where we have today one of our previous past expert speakers, Mr. Mike Woods, and we're going to be discussing building regs. Looking at this, I mean, does it just apply to a new build or, or do I have to do this with um, conversion works? I mean, I see people with lovely photographs on social media and they go around ripping all the plaster off the walls, taking it back to bare brick and going, hey, look at this. We're doing a proper job. Do, does it have implications or, or does it not apply to these people? It's frightening, Andrew. I see this stuff. and I, I, It's frightening. So, so for example, um, if you have, no, oh, to answer your question, it's not just new build, it is refurbishment as well. But how, but what is relevant, okay? So let's just say that you wanted to put an ensuite in your HMO, okay? And somebody would go, okay, uh, or maybe put two ensuites in their HMO. And they do this work, but they don't know that they should and must submit a building regs application. You see, um, the relevant parts here are, firstly, you're creating a wet room. So you're connecting to the a toilet, no doubt, to a, a soil pipe. So those pipes have got to be the right sizes in accordance with building regulations. So the relevant document applies there, which is drainage. Now, if you put an, if you put a, an ensuite in, you need to put in an extractor fan. An extractor fan is a relevant works item. So the fact that you put in drainage in, you're putting in an extra, a wet room which needs extraction, that's a, a fan on its own. The plumbing aspect and the tiling are not relevant and the petition and the door are not relevant, but you, are, you, you need to do this. Now I foresee one day, some people are gonna get a nasty surprise because when they come to sell their property uh, that was a Victorian house that's been converted into an HMO. And let's say they're 10 years down the line and they go to sell the property and the purchaser's solicitor, uh, sorry, the purchaser's valuer comes in and he looks at this lovely Victorian property or Georgian house and will definitely notice that these wet rooms, these en suites are not part of the original structure. They wouldn't have been. So he's going to check on them and he's going to report and I've seen this quotation or rather I've seen this word entered onto a surveyor's valuation report solicitor to obtain copy of the building regulations completion certificate prior to release of funds. Now, 10 years down the line, you didn't get building regs involved and you now need a completion certificate in order to sell your property. And you, you've been told that at a point where you get your mortgage offer, you know, or it, it's it, it, at the valuation point. It's, it's frightening that there's so many of those going to happen. So, yeah, that, that's one of the things that, I, that I've seen happening and it will happen. So that's the simplest. HMO, put an en suite in. If you, the obvious would be if you would create an extension. So, you know, foundations, digging in the ground, part A structure. The, the roof part A structure, the walls themselves part A structure, um, your floor and then the resistance to heat loss, that, that comes into what's called a um, document L1A, which and the A is relevant to domestic dwellings and B is commercials. So document L, that relates to thermal heat loss. So in terms of what insulation you've got to put into your walls. So and here's the other trip up, and I see this often, and you just, I know you said it purposely, I've gone back to brick, and, and they're now putting new plaster on or dry lining. Here's the trigger. If you knock off more than 25% of the internal plaster or external render of an external wall, you must thermally insulate that wall and improve it. You must improve it to a better level than it is now. So for example, and I'm sure people have seen this, uh, it might not necessarily be in on a refurb, but on more like a local authority enveloping scheme where there's this gray polystyrene boarding going up around streets of houses 
uh, and K rend going on and all this type of stuff. But that's the that's the product. So if you were um, hacking off the external render of a property, you need to thermally improve that wall, and that would be typically the type of product you'd use. If you hacked off externally, but it doesn't mean you have to insulate externally, you could still insulate internally. But the fact that you've changed the, the existing resistance to heat loss of that wall, you must thermally improve it. And typically on the outside, 100 mil of that polystyrene, the gray foam, Internally, what I do is I usually construct a, a timber frame inside 50 millimeters and I add 50 millimeters of Celotex or, or um, Kingspan or other products, uh, whichever the relevant, the, the same product, but 50 mil of polyurethane. And this is the one with the, the foil either side of it. Yeah, so it's not the white jab like polystyrene, it's 50 mil. So you need to do that. So Again, I see it, they're hacked off and they're, they're rendering and skimming and, and they are they not telling building regulations out of ignorance? I don't know, but they, they really should do. So um, well, it would be picked up on a building regs inspection. Uh, and just to sort of jump in there on you said about putting the white uh, jab light board in the gaps, you wouldn't put that because that's a fire hazard and it doesn't meet hard air through some... Yeah. Correct, correct about the fire regs. Correct. So it, it's important that you put the right products in place when you fit. And that's part of what the building control are looking for, that yeah. what you do in every aspect of it is yeah. built safely. Brilliant. Mike, thank you very much. It's goodbye from me, Andrew Roberts, and goodbye from yep. Mike Woods as well. Thank you very much, Cheers everybody. And thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.